The following message is a production of Tony Broom Ministries. This section talks about revelation and realization. That's the title, Revelation and Realization. To realize what a wonderful Savior we have. To realize the Word of God and it's revealed to us. We talk about revelation that sounds like a big supernatural thing, but it's an exciting thing that we can have revelation. We think about the book of the Revelation, but there is revelation all throughout the Bible. Reveals to us the unveiling of Christ. That's what revelation is. It reveals to us Christ. More about Jesus would I know. More of His grace to others show. It reveals to us who He is, And people talk about revelation. But when they talk about their revelation, it's not revealing that much about Christ. The revelation in the Bible is always having to do with Christ. Points to Christ. Centers around Christ. And we will not know the fullness of this revelation, of course. We won't know the fullness of it until we get to heaven. And even then, throughout the endless ages of eternity... And my brother back there sings that song. While the ages roll, I'll keep on praising Him. Glory to His name. And we keep on praising and worshiping God. And that means that throughout the ages, not only will I praise Him, but I'll never understand all the fullness of Him. God will continually be revealing and unveiling Christ and Himself to us all throughout the ages of eternity. Heaven will never be boring. If you're right with God and you love the Lord, heaven will be a wonderful and beautiful place. Revelation is a wonderful thing. It's a supernatural thing. It's a spiritual thing. It's an exciting thing. The spiritual truth says God enlightens and empowers His people. He gives us power to live the Christian life. He reveals Christ to us. And He enlightens us. He gives us understanding. And you don't really know the fullness of that power, that revelation, until you are enlightened, until you have your eyes open, the eyes of your understanding being opened. And that's what the Bible focus verse tells us about from Ephesians 1, 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of His calling. And what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. This verse is exciting too. Because it tells us about the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. This is what our problem used to be. It's what the problem of the world is now. They're in darkness. They're blind to the things of God. They're blind to the gospel. If our gospel be hid, it's hid to those who are lost. And the God of this world has blinded the minds of them in unbelief. Their eyes are closed. They're blind to the things of God. It's such a wonderful thing to have your eyes enlightened and open to the things of God, to know Him, to have a relationship with Him, things you didn't even think about before. You didn't even see and you didn't understand that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. This verse tells us about we are having the revelation made known to us. And there's two parts. You know the hope of His calling. That's having to do with our salvation here. We are having a calling, and we do have a calling upon our life. You may not be called to be a bishop or a pastor or a teacher, But all of us have a calling on our life, and that is that we're called to be saints. We are called into salvation. And that's a wonderful thing because He's called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. And He's given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ that you may know the hope of His calling. You can live a successful, victorious, happy Christian life in this life that we live now. And then the riches of His inheritance in the saints. The riches of the glory of this inheritance in the saints. The best is yet to come. 
We're not just hoping and making it through this life now. And that's a wonderful thing, but the best is yet to come. The hope of our calling now and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. When we get to heaven, it will be made known to us this wonderful place to live and be with the Lord forever and the revelation of Christ throughout the ages of eternity. Before we can experience the revelation of God and know who we are in him fully, we must know that we have been made accepted in the beloved. You must know that you are blessed before you can expect to claim and enjoy your blessings and position in Christ as a believer. Before we can really know what the revelation is all about, we must know that we are blessed, that we have been made accepted in the beloved. You may feel like you've been a failure in your life, and all of us have been in times, but God has made you accepted in the beloved. He makes up the difference when we fail, when we sin, when we come short. Now, we should not sin deliberately and willfully, but we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And God makes the difference up when He knows our heart and we serve Him and we want to follow Him the best that we can. And He makes up the difference. We confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I'm glad that we have a God that would whole heap rather forgive us than to judge us. And He's like our parents. Sometimes they get kind of upset and fretted with us. They want to knock the daylights out of us. But they would heap rather hug us and cuddle us up to them and, and love us than to have to whip us. And so sometimes it takes a little both, but God is a merciful God. He wants to love us and He wants to show us our position in Christ. But we have to know and believe that we are made accepted in the Beloved. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. All of our blessings are in Christ, and they are laid up there in the heavenly places. We think about God blessing us now, and the blessings we have now, and certainly He blesses us now, but any blessing that we have now is like Christian music. It's contemporary. It just lasts for a little while. Our blessings that he has laid up for us in heaven will last forever because they're not contemporary. They're not passing. They're not just here today and gone tomorrow. It's like our daily bread. Lord, give us our daily bread because the bread I need today is not good enough for tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to need that bread for that day. And the Lord tells us don't worry about tomorrow. Today has enough to worry about. You don't worry about tomorrow. Sufficient unto this day is the evil thereof. We fret ourselves about worrying about tomorrow. We need to take care of today and enjoy God's blessings today and let tomorrow be tomorrow. We're not promised tomorrow, and if it comes, we'll be there, and that will be that day, and God will help us through that day. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's where all blessing come from, is God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. We have all spiritual blessings. God hasn't held anything back from us. He blesses us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Where are my blessings? They are in Jesus Christ. Everything that I have is in Christ. My salvation, my justification, my sanctification, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, divine healing, any blessing you can name, it's all in and through Christ. And it's there in the heavenly places. Those treasures, those revelations, those things that are unseen, that are laid up there for us, all to enjoy when we get to heaven. They are there in the heavenly places in Christ. According as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Before this world was even thought about, You and I were already chosen in Christ. That's what this verse says. According as He hath chosen us in Him, in Christ, before the foundation of the world. The next time you get to feeling the mullygrubs and up the miff tree and feeling sorry for yourself, just think about 
that you are chosen in Christ, you're special, you're blessed, you're highly favored, you're chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. And that makes you something special. You're not just dust. God says we're dust, and to dust we shall return. That's after Adam sinned. God says this is what's going to happen to you. But that's not the end of the story. When Jesus comes, the second Adam, he comes on the scene. God says, you're more than just dust. I've chosen you in Christ before the foundation of the world. And now you're blessed, you're highly favored, you're lifted up. You're anointed so you won't be disappointed. And you're blessed so you won't be stressed. He would be our Savior. And we should be holy and without blame before him in love. That makes us want to be holy. To realize how blessed we are in Christ having predestinated us, not to be lost or saved, but He has predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of His will. He adopted us into His family, and it's not just like physical children who find out that they're adopted, and it's all right to be adopted. It's wonderful that you have parents who will adopt you into their home, give you their name, give you all the inheritance and blessings that they have. But that still doesn't make you biologically theirs. But when you are adopted into the family of God, not only are you His by relationship, but you're His biologically. He adopts you. He created you in the beginning. And now He has adopted you into His family. And it says to the good pleasure of His will, He had good pleasure in doing it. Nobody had to con Him into it. Nobody had to twist His arm as though someone could twist God's arm. But he had good pleasure in adopting us into the family of God. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. I couldn't earn it. I couldn't merit it. I couldn't gain it on my own. But he made me accepted in the beloved. God says, I accept you. And I say, why in the world would you accept me? He says, just because I love you. Because you've met the conditions, you've come to my son, you believed on me through my son, and I made you accepted in the beloved. Jesus is the beloved, and he's made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. By the grace of God, my sins are forgiven, and I know that my sins are forgiven. What sins are you talking about? I don't remember them anymore. From the book of life, they've all been torn out. I don't remember them anymore. And all of our sins are gone. All of our sins have been forgiven. And we don't have to be condemned. We don't have to be guilty. We don't have to be put down. We don't have to put ourselves down. We don't need to let anybody else put us down. And don't you let... It's all right to be convicted in the Holy Spirit... The Word of God convicts you, but don't you let no preacher put you down. Don't you let no man put you down. Don't you let nobody put you down. And don't put yourself down because you're highly lifted up in favor. God has blessed you, and He has made you accepted in the Beloved. And if He has accepted you, then who's going to disassociate you? If God be for us, who can be against us? We are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Let's talk about spirit of revelation. Now that we know that we're accepted in the Beloved, now that we know that we're blessed and we're highly favored, we can talk about this spirit of revelation. Verse 15, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing to have the Apostle Paul to pray for you? Woo! Man, that would be glorious, wouldn't it? Well, he prayed for these people in Ephesians, and guess what? That means because you and I are born-again believers that we have attached on to that thing, and in a way, He prayed for us too. Just like in John chapter 17, Jesus prayed for the disciples there, and He prayed for all those who would believe on Him through their word, and that means you and me. Jesus prayed for us there in His high priestly prayer in John 17. And now the Apostle Paul is praying for us here, and he said, I'm making mention of you And I'm giving thanks to God for you, making mention of you in my prayers. And here's what he prays for. And if you don't know what to pray, and all of us get in that place sometimes, we don't know what to pray. There are so many prayers in the Bible. And I've heard people say, I don't like those preachers who read prayers. Now I know what they're saying. 
But there are a lot of prayers in the Bible that are prayers. Psalms that are prayers. A lot of prayers in the Bible. Don't you be against written prayers because that's what the Bible is. It's got a lot of written prayers in there. And a lot of times I don't know what to pray. But I can read when the psalmist pray. Oh Lord, hear my cry. I come unto thee. I lift up my heart unto you. From the depths have I cried unto thee. You can read the prayers. And it makes some sense out of what you're feeling. That's why the songwriters get all the money and you and I don't. Because we feel it, but they write it down so they get all the royalties. Man, that's what I meant. That's how I feel. Yeah, but he wrote it down. He got the money and you're still feeling it. And here's what he prayed. That the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Wow! What a prayer to pray for somebody. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, and this proves too that God and Jesus, even though it's all God, the Holy Spirit's God, but it's not the same. They're different persons of the Godhead. And the apostle here says that the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is still God, but it's a different person of the Godhead. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. God will give you wisdom in your spirit and revelation in the knowledge of Him. The more that you know about Him, the more that you have revelation. If you want revelation, if you want power with God, it comes through the Word of God. It's not given to you at an altar. Even though God can do great and mighty things for you at an altar. People want a shortcut and receive just all of it at an altar. It doesn't all come at an altar. It comes through hearing the Word of God, through prayer, through giving yourself to God, through living for God every day. There's no shortcuts. You might have a shortcut on your desktop, but you don't have a shortcut in the kingdom of God. It's a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling. That's our salvation that we're living now in this world. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. That's when you get to heaven and the best is yet to come. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe? The power of God, the Holy Ghost, is available to believers. And God has given us this power. And the apostles' prayer is, I want you to know the exceeding greatness of this power for us were who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world but also in that which is to come. This power is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, it is the power who dwells in us. We don't have to go around down. We don't have to go around. Everybody gets down sometimes. But the same power that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit who dwells in you. Greater is He that is in you than He that's in this world. You don't need to be condemned. You don't need to be put down. You don't need to feel sorry for yourself because you've got the God of the universe through the Spirit of the Holy Ghost living and abiding in you. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead and put him at God's right hand, far above all principality, all power, all dominion, all might, every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. So what are they doing when they try to take his name off the air, off the internet, off the printed page? They're trying to do away with the greatest name that ever will be. That's what it's all about. It's not just another man's name. If it was not so important, they wouldn't care. But it is important, and he is important, and he has the most high name ever. And there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. He hath put all things under His feet. Sounds like He is it. He's the one. God put all things under His feet and gave Him to be the head over all things to the church, which is His body, the fullness of Him that fills all in all. We are just representing Him, taking the message of Christ to the world, In this spirit of revelation, I want you to have this spirit of revelation, power, and the spirit of revelation will be given to you. That's what God wants us to have. 
He wants us to take the message to the world because we are the ones, the fullness of his body, who feels all in all. How does he feel all? Well, through the Holy Spirit. But he does it through the church, reaching out into the world with the revelation of Jesus Christ. We have the good news, the gospel. We have the most powerful thing. We don't have to search for ways. Let us help the body of Christ. Let us find ways to build the church and let us find ways that we can make our church grow. We already have the greatest message of all. We already have the greatest way of doing it. There are different methods of doing it, but the message is still the same. He put all things under his feet, gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Who is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The divine mystery of grace. This was a mystery of how we could have such a wonderful revelation. How this thing could come about. This cause, Paul says in chapter 3, verse 1, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, were, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words. And he goes on to say, if you read it, you'll understand this mystery. It was a mystery. It was held secret from years past. And it was a mystery. But now it's made known. And he says in verse 6 that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. This is a mystery, but now it's made known. It's not a mystery anymore. The Jew and the Gentile, the red and the yellow, the black and the white, they can all come into the kingdom of God. It's not just a son of Abraham thing now, but we are all now made sons of Abraham and daughters of Abraham through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and by faith and through faith in him. Wherefore I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. God used his power to make known this mystery to the apostle and now he's passing on the good news to us saying, come on in Gentiles, you don't have to stay outside just because you're not a Jew. You don't have to stay outside of the law. You didn't have the law. You were kept and you were foreigners and strangers from the covenant of God. But now through the blood of Jesus Christ, you who sometime were far off are made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. Strength, immeasurable love and power. Verse 14, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here he's praying us for us again. Of whom the whole body, the whole family in heaven and earth is named. We all look to Christ. If you're lost, you need to look to Him to be saved. If you're saved, you need to look to Him for everything that you have. We all, the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. Glory be unto God. We need to feed our inner man so much and maybe not our outward man not quite so much. The old pastor that I used to have said we grow in waste but not in grace. And I think that's true. We need to feed our inward man that you would be fed in the inner man that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. And that's a lot of riches, by the way. To be strengthened with his might by his spirit in the inner man and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Oh, Shammahi Karamanai. Praise God. God wants us to be filled with His fullness. He wants you to be sanctified. He wants you to receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost. He wants you to be blessed beyond measure. God is a blessing God, a God of blessing, a God of faith, a God of might. And He wants us to be strengthened. We live in perilous times, but God still has the answer for us today. And Jesus is still the answer. The revelation and realization is that we have had this thing revealed to us. We're all part of the same body. And He's coming back again. 
when we realize just how close the coming of Jesus is. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this word. I thank you that you've given us this understanding to be revealed to us in our heart, to know that we're living not only in perilous times, but in exciting times to be alive, to be a Christian, to have means to spread the gospel to the ends of the earth. And I pray that many would hear the message of Christ and many would come to him and be born again and have the revelation in their heart and their life of just who Jesus is and to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge. In Jesus' name, amen. The preceding message has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries.